A Princess of Mars, John Carter Another of the large airships exploded high in the air. Members of the crew fell to the ground. The huge ship lost control and began turning again and again. Soon it was close to the ground. The warriors climbed aboard the ship and began fighting the members of the crew who were still alive. Soon the fighting stopped. The warriors began taking everything from the ship. At last they brought a captive from deep within the ship. Two of the warriors had their captive by each arm. I wanted to see what new and strange form of life this creature would be. As they came near, I saw that it was a woman. She looked like a woman from Earth. She was young. Her skin was a light red, almost a copper color. I saw at once that she was extremely beautiful. She had a fine face with large dark eyes and long black hair. As her guards led her away, she saw me for a moment. She seemed very surprised. Her face looked hopeful. But when I made no attempt to speak to her, her face grew sad and she looked very small and frightened. As I watched her disappear into a building, I realized that Sola was near me. Sola. John Carter, that woman will be saved for the great games that are held by our people. The games are long and cruel and end in death for those captured in battle. Her death will be slow and painful. She will die for the enjoyment of all. John Carter Sola's face seemed sad when she said this. I could tell by the way she spoke that she did not like the games and did not want to see the young woman die. She was very different from the rest of her people. Sola, do you not like the games? Sola, no, John Carter. My mother died in the games. That is a secret you must not tell anyone. The wall where Tars Tarkas found you held eggs that produce our young. All the children belong to the tribe. A mother never knows which child is hers when they come out of the egg. My mother hid the egg that carried me. It was not placed within the walled area. She kept her secret until after I was born. But others discovered her secret, and she was condemned to die in the games. She hid me among other children before she was captured. If this secret were learned, I too would be in the games. Before she left me, my mother told me the name of my father. I alone keep that secret. It would mean death for him as well as me. My people are violent and cruel. John Carter The next day I entered the great room where the green Martians held meetings. The red woman prisoner was there too. Soon the leader of the green Martians came into the room. His name was Lorquas Potomel. He began speaking to the prisoner. Lorquas Potomel, who are you and what is your name? Deja Thoris, I am the princess. Deja Thoris, daughter of Mors Kayak, the ruler of Helium. Our airship was on a scientific flight. We were to study the air and atmosphere. Without our work, the air on our planet would grow thin, and we would all die. Why would you attack us, John Carter? As she talked, a warrior ran to her and hit her in the face, knocking her to the ground. 
he placed a foot on her small body and began laughing. I reached for the small sword I carried and rushed to attack the huge warrior. He was a strong opponent, but again, because of the low gravity on Mars, my strength was far greater than his. In a few short minutes, the green warrior was dead. I helped the young woman to her feet. Deja Thoris, who are you? Why did you risk your life to help me? You look almost the same as my people, but you wear the weapons of a green warrior. Who, or what, are you? John Carter. My name is John Carter. I am from the planet Earth. How I got here is a long story. I attacked that warrior because, where I come from, men do not attack women. I will offer you my protection as long as I can. However, I must tell you that I, too, am a captive. Sola, come, John Carter, and bring the Red Woman with you. Let us leave this room quickly before some warrior attempts to stop us. John Carter. The three of us quickly returned to the building where I had spent the last several days. Sola then left to prepare food. Wula sat in the corner and looked at the both of us. The young woman was afraid of poor, ugly Wula. I told her not to fear him. Wula is not only my guard, he is my friend. I have treated him with kindness that he has never known. As each day passes, he trusts me more. I now think he would follow any command I give. Sola has told me that all captives are held until they can die in the great games held by the green Martians. Our only chance to survive is to escape, but we must have Sola's help for our plan to succeed. Deja Thoris Yes, if we stay with the green warriors, we will both die. If we are to escape, we will need several of the animals to ride. It would be our only chance. John Carter. I have several of the animals. They were given to me when I became a warrior. Sola came back later with food for the two of us. Deja Thoris and I asked for her help. The three of us talked long into the night, at last, Sola gave us her answer. Sola, your best chance for escape will be in the next two days. We will leave this city tomorrow and begin a long trip to the home of our tribe. I will help you escape, but I must come with you. I will be killed if you escape. Deja Thoris Sola, of course you must come with us. You are not cruel or violent as many of your people are. Help us, and I can promise you a much better life. You will be treated with respect as an honored guest. John Carter The next morning we rode away from the city on our animals, more than a thousand animals were carrying the huge tribe of green Martians. Also in the group were one American, one princess of the royal house of Helium, our guard, Sola and poor ugly Wula. Late that night we left the camp. One animal carried me, another Sola and Princess Deja Thoris. Wula followed close behind. We rode quickly through the Martian night. I looked into the sky and saw Earth across the great distance of space. Since I had met the Princess Deja Thoris, 
I had not thought once of earth or home. I knew then that I would never willingly leave her. The next morning, I could see that we were being followed by several hundred of the green warriors. Our animals were very tired. I knew we must stop. I told Sola and the princess to take the stronger of the two animals and ride away. I will hold back the green warriors as long as I can. Wula, go with them and guard them with your life. Deja Thoris. We can't leave you alone. It would be certain death if you are captured again. You must come with us. John Carter. Sola took the princess by the arm and lifted her on top of the animal she had chosen. Quickly she began riding away. For a moment, Wula looked at me, then turned and ran after them. I took out my rifle from its case. I began firing to slow the green warriors. I was able to slow them for more than an hour, but then I had no more ammunition. Soon I was surrounded. A green warrior got off his animal and came toward me. He pulled out his long, thin sword. I reached for mine. As we neared each other, I saw it was Tars Tarkas. He stopped and spoke to me very slowly. Tars, Tarkas, you will die here, today. John Carter, it is I who must kill you. Know that I will take no pleasure in your death. A short time later, John Carter, the princess and their friend, the green Martian woman Sola, attempt to escape rather than face death. The princess and Sola must flee while John Carter tries to slow the green warriors who are chasing them. John Carter continues to tell what happens in Edgar Rice Burroughs' story, A Princess of Mars. John Carter The huge green warrior Tars Tarkas came slowly toward me with his thin sword. I backed away. I did not want to fight him. I did not wish his death. He had been as kind to me as a green Martian can be. As I stood watching him, a rifle fired in the distance, then another and another. Tars Tarkas and his warriors were under attack from another tribe of green warriors. Within seconds, a terrible battle raged. As I watched, three of the attackers fell on Tars Tarkas. He killed one and was fighting with the other two when he slipped and fell. I ran to his aid, swinging my sword. He was on his feet. Shoulder to shoulder, we fought against the attackers. They finally withdrew after an hour of fierce fighting. Tars Tarkas, John Carter, I think I understand the meaning of the word friend. You saved my life when I was about to take yours. From this day... You are no longer a captive among our people, but a leader and great warrior among us. John Carter There was a smile on his face. Once again, he took off a metal band from his arm and gave it to me. Tars Tarkas, I have a question for you, John Carter. I understand why you took the Red Woman with you, but why did Sola leave her people and go with you? John Carter She did not want to see me or the Princess Harmed. She does not like the great games held by your people where captives are led to die. She knows if she is caught, she too will die in the games. 
She told me she hates the games because her mother died there. Tars Tarkas. What? How could she know her mother? John Carter. She told me her mother was killed in the games because she had hidden the egg that produced her. Her mother hid Sola among other children before she was captured. Sola said she was a kind woman, not like others of your tribe. Tars Tarkas grew angry as I was speaking, but I could see past his anger. I could see pain in his eyes. I immediately knew Sola's great secret. I have a question for you, Tars Tarkas. Did you know Sola's mother? Tars Tarkas? Yes. And if I could have, I would have prevented her death. I know this story to be true. I have always known the woman who died in those games had a child. I never knew the child. I do now. Sola is also my child. John Carter for three days, we followed the trail left by the Princess Deja Thoris, Sola and poor ugly Woola. At last, we could see them in the distance. Their animal could no longer be ridden. They were talking. When we came near, Woola turned to fight use. I slowly walked to him with my hand out. Sola was standing near me. She was armored and prepared to fight. The princess was leaning next to her feet. Sola, what is wrong with the princess? Sola. She has been crying much these past few days, John Carter. We believed you died so we could escape. The thought of your death was very heavy on this woman. My friend Deja Thoris... Come and tell her you are among the living. Perhaps that will stop her crying. John Carter I walked to where the Princess Deja Thoris was lying on the ground. She looked at me with eyes that were red from crying. Princess, you are no longer in danger. Tars Tarkas has come with me as a friend. He and his warriors will help to see you safely home, and, Sola, I would have you greet your father, Tars Tarkas, a great leader among your people. Your secret no longer means death to anyone. He already knows you are his daughter. The two of you have nothing to fear. Sola turned and looked at Tars Tarkas. She held out her hand. He took it. It was a new beginning for them. Deja Thoris I know our world has never before seen anyone like you, John Carter. Can it be that all Earthmen are like you? I was alone, a stranger, hunted, threatened. Yet you would freely give your life to save me. You come to me now with a tribe of green warriors who offer their friendship. You are no longer a captive, but wear the metal of great rank among their people. No man has ever done this. John Carter Princess, I have done many strange things in my life. Many things much smarter men would not have done. And now, before my courage fails... I would ask you to be mine in marriage. She smiled at me for a moment, and then her dark eyes flashed in the evening light. Deja Thoris. You have no need of your courage, John Carter, because you already knew the answer before you asked the question. John Carter. And so Deja Thoris, Princess of Helium, a daughter of the red planet Mars, promised herself in marriage to John Carter, a gentleman of Virginia.
John Carter. Several days later, we reached the city of Helium. At first, the Red Men of Helium thought we were an attacking army, but they soon saw their princess. We were greeted with great joy. Tars Tarkas and his green warriors caused the greatest excitement. This huge group of green warriors entered the city as friends and allies. I soon met Tardos Mors, the grandfather of Dejah Thoris. He tried several times to thank me for saving the life of the princess, but tears filled his eyes and he could not speak. John Carter For nine years I served in the government and fought in the armies of Helium as a prince of the royal family. It was a happy time. The princess Dejah Thoris and I were expecting a child. Then, one day, a soldier returned from a long flight. When he landed, he hurried to the great meeting room. Tardos Moors met with the soldier and reported that every creature on the planet had but three days to live. He said the great machines that produced the atmosphere on the planet had stopped producing oxygen. He said no one knew why this had happened, but there was nothing that could be done. The air grew thin within a day. Many people could do nothing but sleep. I watched as my princess was slowly dying. I had to try something. I could still move with great difficulty. I went to our airport and chose a fast aircraft. I flew as fast as I could to the building that produced the atmosphere of the planet. Workers were trying to enter. I tried to help. With a great effort, I opened a hole. I grew very weak. I asked one of the workers if he could start the engines. He said he would try. I fell asleep on the ground. It was dark when I opened my eyes again. My clothing felt stiff and strange. I sat up. I could see light from an opening. I walked outside. The land looked strange to me. I looked up to the sky and saw the red planet Mars. I was once again on Earth in the desert of Arizona. I cried out with deep emotion. Did the worker reach the machines to renew the atmosphere? Did the air reach the people of that planet in time to save them? Was my princess Dejah Thoris alive? Or did she lie cold in death? For ten years now, I have watched the night sky, looking for an answer. I believe she and our child are waiting there for me. Something tells me that I shall soon know.